welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Molly Fox. Here's your weekly update. One of Cabrini College's residence halls experienced a bomb threat this past Sunday, March 17th. A student answered the community telephone on the second floor of the Woodcrest residence late Sunday night. The caller stated that there was a bomb in the building. Residence life staff members evacuated the building and Radnor Police Department were notified. When Radnor Police arrived around 9.45 p.m., they requested that nearby Holy Spirit Library and East Residence Hall be evacuated, with students being directed to Xavier Hall for their protection. After bomb-detecting dogs swept Woodcrest Hall, students were allowed back into the residence halls at 12.30 a.m. Monday morning. Cabrini spokesman Jean Castellano said that Radnor officers determined the threat was unfounded. Radnor police continued to investigate. If you want to welcome spring, then go to the World Water Day 5K Run and Walkathon. This Saturday, March 23rd, there will be a 5K at Martin Luther King Drive near the Philadelphia Art Museum. Participating in this event will help in demonstrating concern and passion for clean water. The 5K will run from 9 to 10 a.m. On Monday, March 11th, the college hosted a comedy club event in the mansion starring comedian Adam Grabowski. Let's take a closer look. So me and my partner Jim brought Adam here. Uh, we met him at NACA, which is a conference for programming boards for colleges across the country. And he was really funny, he was really cool. We spoke to him for a little bit and then um, went through with booking him and he had the free t-shirts which we used as advertisements. Um, we got food for everybody to eat and he has the shirts that he is selling too. I didn't know what grad school to go to. That was why. Because you can't just like go to grad school and not know what you want to do with your life. Like you can with undergrad where you, you could do a major. So graduated a semester early from the University of Illinois. Didn't know what to do. So then I tried comedy and then made it work. We brought Adam from our conference that we go to every year. So we saw him and we thought it would be a really funny act to bring here. And everyone had an awesome time. The favorite part was probably when they were texting the entire time while filming. That was my favorite. Like, look at my face, it's glowing. Like, I love when people do that. I loved it, I thought it was hysterical. I only saw him for a couple of minutes at NACA, so it was really awesome to see his, uh, his full show. I thought he was great. I'm interviewing you now, do you like that? Yeah? As an interviewer, I, I just ask the hard questions. So. AdamComedy.com, thank you. That was your trip around the block. So Kevin, how are the men's basketball team doing at Cabrini? Well, they're one win away from the final four for the second straight season. They're going back to Salem this weekend, so let's take a look. The Cavs are heading back to Salem. For the second straight season, the men's basketball team advanced to the Elite Eight with a 70-63 win over number 20, the College of Wooster, on Saturday. Aaron Walton Moss led the Cavs with 24 points and 12 rebounds. The Cavaliers will take on number two, Amherst College, on Friday at 5.30 p.m. with a trip to the final four on the line. The men's lacrosse team lost to top-ranked SUNY Cortland on Saturday, 10-7. Corey Elmer scored three goals in the defeat. The number 13 Cavs faced number 18 Union College on Sunday at 1 p.m. The women's lacrosse team fell to 0-4 on the season with a 12-7 loss to Ursinus College. The Lady Cavs will bid for their first win of the season on Thursday when they take on Swarthmore College at 7 p.m. As opening day approaches, the Phillies look more prepared for the regular season. They defeated the New York Yankees in spring training action on Tuesday by a score of 4-1. to one. Kyle Kendrick allowed one run in six innings, while Dominic Brown and Ryan Howard both hit home runs in the win. Tune in next week for a look at the Cavs' trip to Salem, as well as updates on the rest of Cabrini and Philly sports. Now here's Molly with your trip across the nation. Seton Hills University women's lacrosse team tour bus got in an accident Saturday on the Pennsylvania Turnpike in Carlisle. The bus was carrying 23 people who were players or associated with the team when it crashed, authorities said. The coach of the team was among the two that were killed in the crash. She, she was six months pregnant. The unborn baby did not survive. According to a state police spokesman, the accident was still under investigation as of Saturday afternoon. A former University of Central Florida student was found dead in his dorm room of apparent suicide alongside weapons. He also had a backpack of bombs, officials said Monday. 
School spokesman Grant Heston identified the student as 30-year-old James Oliver Seven Kumaran. UCF Police Chief Richard Beery told reporters, while the crime scene processing was underway in the room, we found some notes and some writings that indicated that this was a planned attack. The dorm home to about 500 students was evacuated for a brief time. Caroline Pla just won her fight to get back on the field. Pla has been playing football since kindergarten and for the past two years the 11 year old has been holding her own on the gridiron. Her playing time with the Catholic Youth Organization ended after last season when the Archdiocese of Philadelphia enforced its boys only policy for football, sidelining the all-star guard and defensive end. Archdiocesan spokesperson Kenneth Gavin said that the Archdiocese will allow for co-ed participation in CYO football effective in the 2013 season. Looking for its sights to see in Philly, Location's own Bethany Biggenhoe got the chance to take a tour around the city of Brotherly Love. Let's see what she's up to. Welcome to Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Join us as we take a tour to all the major hotspots. I'm Bethany Biggenhill, on location for location. If you're not a Philadelphia sports fan, you should be. We're at the Wells Fargo Center here, and you can come support your 76ers and Flyers. Do you love Philadelphia? Do you love spring sports? The Citizens Bank Park is the host of the Philadelphia Phillies. If you don't have tickets, just go right across the street to Xfinity Live and you can enjoy all the games there. Welcome to South Street, one of Philadelphia's most famous streets. Here is the home to TLA, which hosts many different concerts and different types of genre of music. Also, there's many fine dining options and shopping. Located behind me is the Philadelphia Museum of Art, where you can check out world-famous paintings and learn the history about them. After seeing all that Philly has to offer, how can you tell me you don't love Philadelphia? I'm Bethany Biggenhoe, now back to the news desk. That was your trip across the nation. Christine, what's going on with entertainment? Well, there's definitely some action going on with uh, the celebrities this week, so let me tell you about it. First up in breaking news this weekend, they have reportedly been dating for months, but only recently did Tiger Woods and Lindsey Vaughn confirm they have been dating. The 37-year-old golfer and the 28-year-old Olympic gold medalist skier each posted statements and professionally shot photos of them together on their Facebook pages Monday morning. The two met and struck up a friendship, friendship at a charity auction in April 2012 before they began dating in the fall. It wouldn't have been an eventful week if Lindsay Lohan wasn't getting to, into trouble. She isn't headed back to jail, but she won't be free to party for a while either. The troubled 26-year-old actress accepted a plea deal on Monday in a misdemeanor car crash case that included 90 days in a lockdown rehabilitation facility that she won't be able to leave. Lohan, who has struggled for years with legal problems and has been briefly jailed five times, pled to no contest with reckless driving and lying to police who were investigating the accident involving the actress in June along Pacific Coast Highway. That was your entertainment update. Now here's Nicole with your trip across the world. A wave of bombings in Iraq on Tuesday, killing 65 people on the eve of the 10th anniversary of the U.S.-led invasion, showed how unstable Iraq remains more than a year after the withdrawal of American troops. It was the deadliest day of attacks in Iraq since September 9th when insurgents unleashed an attack of bombings and shootings across the country that left 92 dead. There was no immediate claim of responsibility for the blasts, but experts say that there is a possibility that Al-Qaeda was involved. For the first time since the Taliban shot her five months ago, Pakistani teenager Malala Yousafzai has done what has made her a target of the would-be assassins. She's gone to school. According to CNN on Tuesday, the 15-year-old attended Ejbastan High School in Birmingham, England, the city in which doctors treated her after she received initial care in Pakistan. 
It was her first day at school since the Taliban shot her in the head in October for campaigning for girls' education. After Ireland, Greece, and Portugal, Cyprus is the fourth European country to be granted a bailout, a $13 billion rescue plan. Cyprus is a tiny island in the southern Europe and a member of the European Union. As part of the plan to rescue Cyprus's outsized banking sector, the EU said deposits of more than 130,000 would be subject to a 9.9% one-time tax, which will be taken out of their bank accounts. Smaller depositors would be subject to a tax of 6.75%. As Cyprus heard the news of the tax, they started lining up outside of ATMs to withdraw money. Banks have placed withdrawal limits of $500, and many ATMs were running out of cash over the weekend. The $13 billion bailout package represents more than half of Cyprus's economy, which has the third smallest economy in the Eurozone. Under pressure from the Cyprus citizens, the Cypriot government rejected the proposal. Thanks for catching up with us this, this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Molly Fox. Stay up to date with us this week by going on our social media sites. Simply search Location News. Stay tuned for Jenna Rosa Giacomo as she talks to students about their Easter traditions. Have a great week, Cabrini. Well, welcome to another episode of Bless Your Heart with Jenna Rosa Giacomo. I am Jenna Rosa Giacomo. And on today's episode of Bless Your Heart, I talk to students about their Easter traditions, the Easter Bunny, and what they were going to be doing over their four-day vacation. Let's check it out, Cabrini. Are you excited? Intrigued? Nervous? Scared? What do you think? I am excited because I'm, I know I'm going to be getting candy. Um, this year we're having Easter at our house. So. <gasps> the whole fam coming? The whole, the whole Johansson family <laughs> coming? The whole family. I am so excited. What are you going to be doing? Probably sleeping most of the weekend. It's very fun. We you still paint eggs. Oh, as long as you still paint the eggs and rock that tradition. That's all that counts. Oh, we do, yes. We still every year as a family. And we will have an Easter egg hunt. We have one for like the older kids and one for the younger kids. Do you believe in the Easter bonnet? I used to. Yes, I do. God bless you. I do. Oh my God. I am you got an avid believer of the Easter bunny. Good. So I'm pretty sure he comes. I'm 100% sure he comes to my house every night. <sighs> Not every so night. So it's like yeah. an ongoing event yeah, then. Like, Easter just happens every day of the year. Yeah. When you hear the word Easter, what is the first few things that come to your mind? Tell a sister. Well, definitely like pastel colors. Ooh, the poop. <laughs> the poop. <laughs> Have a very happy Easter, Cabrini, and enjoy your four-day weekend. I'll see you in two weeks, Cabrini.